So actually, Yasser was my colleague already in high school. So we we're in the same high school, so we are going backwards in time. <laughs> However, Yasser was a bit older and he, he was the best student in the high school, at least he, he taught himself. Only one year. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we didn't interact much in high school or maybe later <clears throat> when we met again here in this department. So, uh, and we also share interest in null surfaces. Yeah. Uh, uh, However, yes, it is working on general analysis. It's not only on, on expanding. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm, wait, I'm waiting for you for, for Yeah, maybe I should say that Jurek was in this group youngest because, for, uh, first of all, Piotr Khrushchev is on the top, then uh, Jurek Kowalski. Uh, is lower than me, than you, than you. <laughs> but nowadays it's opposite. Yeah? You were all in the same high school? No, no, at studies, at studies. No, no, no. Relativity students. So, so we are all students of uh, Andrzej Torfman. However, Piotr Khrushchev and me switched to Jerzy Kioski, who was our supervisor. But he was also my supervisor for, for one year. Maybe only four months, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay, so I have 40 minutes. No, 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 I, I have 40 minutes. No, geometry of Nelson. And I decided to say something about, <laughs> like review or whatever my personal remarks about uh, which I was interested in, and so maybe I will sketch simply first what is the starting point, and then I will try to show some details. If there will be some time, I will say something about applications. Okay, so okay, let me say first that I will explain during this talk what is, does it mean now talk. Uh, and, and if there will be more time, I will tell you what is chaos as a shortcut. But, but okay, these are jokes. Uh, so, M, just space time. It is Lorentzian space time with the metric dimension 4, null hypersurface dimension. Three, so classical case, but obvious generalizations. And then, of course, if this is equipped with Lorentzian metric, that n is equipped with some degenerate metric. Uh, so there is some vector field, which, which is the degeneracy field of this object. So we have k is now vector field, and we know that uh, integral lines of k is just null geodesics. Uh, however, k is not specified, is specified only up to the rescaling. And okay, so this is the starting point. And then we have uh, Levi-Civita connection man. So we can build a tensor which is first derivative of k. And if we restrict this tensor to n, which is not obvious, but it works. Then this object restricted to n will be called B, and this is so called null Weingarten map. Uh, and this is obvious generalization when we feel that k is normal to the surface, so in standard. Uh, non-degenerate case for hypersurfaces, just such an object is called by Garten map. And if we put one index up, because it is a mixed, or oh maybe I'll write in this is okay, so better. Then if we put one index up, we lose some information in, in null case, but in non-degenerate case of the metric, this is uh, the same information. And this guy, is sometimes called 
null second fundamental form and all of these constructions depend on, on the statement of k yes? so, so different case different objects and we can ask what can we do intrinsically on, on n which is k independent in some sense so for instance if we if we construct some more objects, namely volume form, which depends on K, I will show you this. So this is the next step. Then we can, for instance, multiply this volume form with this K, which is uh, vector density. And then, then this is K-independent object. So, so it's a, it's a two-form, yes? And for instance, this two-form, it's exterior derivative with respect to this volume form is called uh, expansion. <coughs> okay, but we are not satisfied with this, with this B for some reasons, and we, we built another object which is Q in my notation, which should correspond to ABM momentum. So, so tensor density, <coughs> and this tensor density is roughly B plus this, plus this B. <coughs> so so uh, it also has indices in this way. And what is nice about this object is that uh, you can intrinsically define the divergence of this object without having natural connection on the null surface. This is another story. So, so in some sense, you can define divergence of this, and you will quickly discover that it corresponds to some component of the uh, Einstein tensor indensitized form. And if, if we have vacuum, you can put to, to zero, for instance. And this is the counterpart of vector constraint for initial data. So, so this Q and G play a role of N degenerate metric and canonical uh, ADM null momentum. So, so, so this is how it goes. Uh, but in non-degenerate case, we know that there is there is vector constraint, but there is also scalar constraint. So, so on this level, the scalar constraint is a k-component of this vector. But you can build another uh, quantity which corresponds to the foliation of n. So, so if, if you want to, to, to think about n as a manifold, that's the end of the story. But if you foliate this manifold with some let's say, two-dimensional surfaces, then you can do 2 plus 2 decomposition of M, and you can build <coughs> another object which corresponds to another direction in the normal uh, null direction, which is transverse to the M. And then the corresponding fourth constraints, fourth constraint appears on M, but it needs foliation. So, so this is the geometry. And some of these uh, equations which appear on transparencies will be familiar for you if you perform 2 plus 1 decomposition, which means when you foliate n from the beginning. And this is what people do very often. So let me start with. Uh, what is this? Ah, OK. So, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is just transparency that I should start with something, so with some old ideas. So I already said the degenerate metric, then problem with a fine parameter about null geodesics, and then problem with parallel transport with the existence of a connection. So so these are steps. Uh, next, yes. Okay, so so now what mathematicians do is and, and, and this is the starting point 
which is not satisfactory, but something can be done. Namely, you can uh, divide by this k. So what does it mean, divide by this k? You pass to the quotient tangent space as a bundle over n, uh, and then the corresponding uh, distribution is two-dimensional. Yes, so it, it, it is often called screen distribution. And on this screen di distribution, there are some natural objects. So there is a Riemannian metric. Uh, uh, maybe next slide. Yes. Oh, okay. So first we pass through the classes. Then <coughs> you have Riemannian metric. And, and the next one, please. And then you can do something with this, with this uh, now Weingarten map and now second fundamental form. But now, they are not three-dimensional objects, but they are objects on classes. But of course, it is not obvious that you can do it, but, but you can calculate and see that. It, so, so, so the output is that uh, first step is uh, quotient space. And what we can do on quotient space, next slide. So we can recognize something which is familiar for people who are doing horizons. So, so if this object, the second fundamental form, vanishes, then this surface is totally geodesic, and, and this is just uh, non-expanding horizons plus, plus constraints, then the, the full, full B vanishes. So, so then you can divide. The, Something does not depend on the section, which is transversal to the lines, etc., etc. So, so in this context, <coughs> one can say that trivial now second fundamental form is a concept of horizon. Uh, okay. And the next step is to, to derive higher derivatives, and maybe this equation in this form is less known. I call this Riccati equation because of the form, yes? For ordinary differential equations, it's exactly this, this form. Non-linear square term. Uh, and, and this is a calculation, yes? So the output of this calculation is that, which is well known, is this so-called right Chaudhuri equation. So, so, in my opinion, the right Chaudhuri equation is a natural equation which can be uh, described on the quotient space. However, the rest of the story needs more. So, maybe I should remind some proposition, which is well known. So, this is one of the form, uh, an application of this, of this equation. Uh, okay. So the, the summary now is as follows, that we have some diagram, diagrams, we have full tangent space, we have two-dimensional distribution, we have B or B bar, okay? And bar means passing through the quotient. And since now, I will go to three dimensions. So the rest of the story will be without dividing by K. So these are standard properties of this object. So, so this now second fundamental form and now a Galton map. And, the, and yeah, so, so, so maybe this, uh, which includes uh, Lie derivative is important. Because you see, when B vanishes, then, then Lie derivative with respect to K of G is 0. And this is symmetry. So, so in some sense, th that's it, yeah? Mm. Okay. And now we can ask some questions. Uh, uh, so we are now somewhere here on this. And then we try to do this, this line. Uh, yeah. So, so we want to have some analog of ADM momentum, or initial value, 
uh, and, and the equations which you can interpret the initial value constraint, but in intrinsically. So, so there are possible applications. Uh, okay. Mm. So this is a reminder which already appeared. Everybody knows what is the standard AD momentum. Yeah. Okay. And now maybe some repeatings, but I need coordinates. So, so x3 is a coordinate which is constant on n. Then maybe 1, 2, 3 is not important, but 0, 1, 2 is internal coordinates. And 1, 2 are coordinates which label the null lines. Yeah? OK. And this is the reminder that g is degenerate with respect to k. OK. And now, new, new, new thing, namely volume element. So, so volume element can be defined as a, as a two-dimensional volume in some sense, but one can check that this is three-dimensional object, but th th this is fine. So, uh, so, okay, so, so we have some volume for Free form. Of course, it depends on k. So, so it's not okay. Next slide. And then, what is funny about this that, that if we pass to 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 densities, we we have a really in, intrinsic uh, object which does not depend on the scaling freedom of k and. And, and uh, in fact, this two form, which corresponds to the vector density, if it is closed, then then we have a nice way to, to describe <coughs> internally what does it mean non-expanding horizon. That's that's the point. Yeah? Okay. Uh, these are slides which which are devoted to mathematicians that such constructions may be done without coordinates because they explore this projection between this three-dimensional uh, fiber and two-dimensional fiber and, and, and so, so, so the pullbacks of some structures here like two form uh, are natural here and then you can do Free form. That's, that's the slide. Okay. Next one, please. Okay. And now uh, a side remark. The, the problem is that if we if we add an extra condition that there exists a symmetric connection which is compatible with this degenerate metric, then we we end up with a very simple uh, structure. So this generic null hypersurface becomes totally geodesic. So, 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 so this is, so we cannot, if you, want to, if you want to understand generic null hypersurface, we cannot demand that there exists internal connection, like in non-degenerate case, which is, which is obvious, this, this goes for so, uh, but however, what we can do, we can at least define something like that, namely divergence of a tensor density with one index up and one index down, and this can be done in a geometric way. That, that's the point. So, so those slides are devoted to the general situation. We have any tensor and which fulfills some algebraic conditions which are needed that the divergence is well defined. Okay, go on. Because maybe it is not interesting so much. But, okay, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, that, that, oh, maybe this, or can you show the next one? Ah, yeah. Okay, so, so well, if you look carefully on this formula, you quickly discover that this definition is correct. Because, Although this tensor has two indices up, which is not obvious how to raise 
raise in this object HAB the index R because there is no inverse metric. However, the, the freedom which appears in this inversion is cancelled by this G. That's, that's the point. So we'll see. And what is... Next slide. Yes. Uh, there are too many slides. I couldn't decide to just throw them away. But I think... Yes. So what I want to say that, on the other hand, uh, this three-dimensional divergence is a restriction of a four-dimensional divergence of this, of this vector density. And, and this is... And, and one can ask why? Because covector density is a natural object. So, 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 so that's, that's, that's the, the, it is not surprising, okay? And now, now we apply this, this, this divergence to, to Q, so we, we need Q, yes? So this is the definition of Q. If you look, if you are familiar with, with standard, the only difference between a standard ADM momentum for non-degenerate metric, which can be written in the same way, is that there is no the last term. So, in, in some sense, if this divergence vanishes, there is no difference. So, on, on the horizons, there is no difference. But, but in general, we need this algebraic term to, to have all these algebraic properties which guarantee that the divergence of Q is well defined. So, 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 so this is the difference, formal difference. Yeah? So, this is the next slide which somehow explains that first step is this guy, but this is not correct. So, okay, and then next slide. Uh, Okay, this is the slide which explains why uh, why the, this component normal tangent of the densitized form of Einstein tensor is a, is a three-dimensional object. So, so maybe it is obvious for you. Uh, next one. Okay, and that's it. So, so this is the correct geometrical uh, way to write uh, constraints on a null surface in some sense without coordinates. Okay? And, 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 and the right hand side depends on Einstein equations. So, 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 so. Q is what? Q is ADM null momentum built from uh, now second fundamental form is a density. And yeah. Uh, was not defined. Sorry. Uh, no, it was. No, there, there was a sign. Okay. So <coughs> so the next thing I have five minutes, yes? Yeah. Or ten. Okay, so uh, so this was till now maybe only this Q is something new, but, but the rest is, is more or less standard. And maybe I need to add one more equation. Next slide, please. No. Okay. So 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 this geometric way of writing these this constraints maybe is less familiar for the audience. So I have written in, a, in another way performing 2 plus 1 decomposition. So, so there is this first equation which is Rachel Dury and which is the k component of this vector constraint and there is this tangent to the, to the slicing component. Uh, and for instance, uh, the traceless part of two-dimensional null second fundamental form is called in literature shear. Uh, 
and the trace of it is called expansion. So, so this is a different way of writing, and you can write as complex functions, etc. So, so but here are just tensors. At, at least she is a tensor. But, but this is obvious that, that she is, is, as, is a symmetric, traceless tensor, yes? There is such a representation. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's worth to say that if you split uh, this Bangata map into, into two-dimensional uh, shear plus expansion, there is also a covector, which is like in, in this, in this uh, uh, object. But you, when, you, when you take this object, this covector disappears. So this is the difference between this and that. And, and this covector has also physical interpretations when we deal with killing horizons, for instance. And then the K component of this is called surface gravity. Uh, and the rest is, I don't know, rotation form? Rotation form, yeah. So, so these are equations which are more or less familiar for you. When we pass to the non-expanding horizon, which means L vanishes, we have some equality which, which quickly uh, says that shear should minus equals plus. So, uh, something like that. So, in this, in terms of the notation, omega is three dimensional. Omega is three W. Three three it's three dimensional. Three yes. Dimensional. Yes. Three dimensional. Yes. So, so he says uh, surface gravity plus this two dimensional object, they form in a natural way three dimensional. Uh, okay, and, and now I want to show something which is familiar for other people. Ishtar, are you here? No. But, okay, but anyway, so, so there is this which I call half intrinsic fourth constraint because it involves uh, expansion in the, in the transverse direction. Yeah? But this is also a law which is transport equation. Should be also called constraint. However, to write this equation, you need foliation. So because different foliation gives different uh, KAB. <clears throat> okay. So you see, uh, I was fast. I have still 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, so if you are interested in details, I can send you these slides. Also, I can send you precise references, papers. Uh, let me summarize what, what I can do with those objects. Yes? So, so objects which appear naturally is Q and lambda. Okay? So for instance, this lambda is a natural object which, which appears when we pass through the null shell, so distributional null matter. There's some jump of lambda. And, and if we have two crossing null shells, then we can go around this crossing sphere, let's say, and then we, we get something which is called the integer ray tooth redmond formula which means that four different Schwarzschild solutions cannot be assigned through this null uh, shell free. There's some relation between masses. So, but one can write another theorem which is no longer spherically symmetric. And then it involves this object. Mm. OK. Uh, the, the data, the data, which I here, is a, is a natural data on a null surface, which can be obtained from variational principles. 
So, so in some sense, one can play the, the game which I call local thermodynamics of black holes, where, where you don't assume from the beginning how this null surface looks like, and then the boundary data which involves Q and G is infinite dimension. So, so, and after some symmetries, you pass to finite space. So, and, and this kind of construction is you know, a common thing. Uh, yes, and now, because the conference is somehow devoted to, uh, part of the conference, in fact, is devoted to near horizon geometry and horizons, I would like to, to say something about this trivial, from this general point of view case. However, also interesting. So, so let me start with, with part of the near horizon geometry which I called basic equation. And, and this is the equation which we need to solve. The rest of the equations are obvious how to solve. So, so, so th this is the standard equation which was exposed by Jurek for many years. And they managed to prove that if we assume axial symmetry, there is some unique solution. Okay? So, so the question is, what about non-symmetric case? Okay, so on the next slide, I have a good uh, news for you, namely at least linear around care is done. So, so the first step in this direction was my method, which is called in Richard Czerny-Wieziewski, Kaminski transformation or whatever. But, but uh, the method enable one, enables one to write part of the theory in a linear level. In a, uh, so, so, so this is non-linear part. So, so this is inverse transformation on, on this covector W A. This inverse transformations enables to write at least from this free equation two of them become linear. And, and because they are linear, uh, it's easier to handle. Although the, 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 the third one is highly complicated, non-linear one. Nevertheless, uh, uh, we managed with my student to prove some hypothesis uh, about this deviation from the symmetry and what was less was in this infinite dimensional space was, was just finite space and this gap was, was uh, filled with Piotr Kruschel, Szybka and Todd partly on a computer finite case it's easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you mean uh, analytic? So you have you have Fourier transfer of some objects which appear here because background has axial symmetry and this infinite vector L square which appears has only finite uh, it reduces to finite dimensional Hilbert space and on this finite dimensional Hilbert space you play with computer and prove that there are no solutions. This is I understand. So does it mean that there is no continuous deformation of the exactly. curve, uh, exactly. curve, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is some island far away, maybe, <coughs> maybe not, who knows? But <coughs> yes, okay. And let me also at the end say something more technical. Uh, I want to draw your attention then this this, uh, this care solution as a near horizon geometry has a natural representation uh, with uh, with the help of so-called generalized green functions. Okay, so so 
first of all, let me write explicitly the solution. This is just a solution on a topological sphere, equipped with the metric G, and here is a vector that is not doesn't matter because uh, metric is Riemannian. So we have we have this extremal curve, and then we perform certain transformation, this inverse transformation. And the price we pay is that we we divide by zeros of W, which means that this phi is no longer uh, smooth, but it's a rather distribution. But 1 over R as a, as a, as a green function of a standard Laplacian. It's also a distribution, so we are not surprised. And then, then this covector, which appears, which has this uh, um, singularities in North and South Pole, can be represented by potentials. And, and if, we, if we do this, namely 26, so we have this Grat and Carroll part of this phi. Then each of these phi is a so-called solution of the green function. So, so 25 is a, is a definition of a green function assigned to a point P on a, on a compact manifold. Uh, and in, in Kerr is just mass, but here it's related to the volume which means that the integral of, of the right-hand side has to vanish because you have Laplacian. Yeah? So, so this is why it is generalized. You remove a uh, constant part of G. This constant harmonic. <coughs> uh, and, and that's it. Namely, you have definition, but pr the problem is what is G? And what is really surprising that this that this G can be written in an explicit form. So I can say that this G written is, is the curve as a new horizon. Uh, okay, thank you. Ah, okay. So near, near to the... Uh, now talk. So, so the K which appears is null and is orthogonal. Orthogonal. Yes? So now talk is orthogonal to other talks. <laughs> but has something common tangent with other with others. So, yeah. so this is the definition of an alpha. And maybe my talk was a little bit chaotic, so I want to, to I, I learned a couple of weeks ago the chaos is a nickname of a, of a general in the U.S. Army. And it means colonel has an outstanding solution. Yeah. <laughs> So, so there was a question whether a null talk is orthogonal to itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, it what, be. so, what, so once again, what is M? And is the area of this? What is M? No, oh, that was a uh, low case M in your green function. For, for yeah, this was a parameter which characterizes uh, curve solution. So, so is A. So M is S and then square is J. That's all. So this is this parameter. So, so this is a normali normalization of the volume. No, no, but what I meant is that M usually has units. So it's a uh, mass. Yeah, okay. Okay, other words.
questions about our surfaces. Um, if, if this is not the case, let us thank you.